Sarah Cherie here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here today to share a bunch of different things with you all, actually. Um, let me do the rundown real quick so you can see if you're interested in watching. I'm going to be sharing new uh, patterns that I actually ordered yesterday. Um, the new Vogue Fall 2022 patterns released and I did an online order. So I'm going to show you what I got uh, before they come in because there's a sale going on. Stay tuned. Um, I also... I got some other patterns and that I'm going to share with you guys, mainly because they're on sale. I had already bought them before I shared the last video, but I didn't share them. But I'm going to go ahead and share them because I think they are super cute and some of you might want to pick them up while they're on sale. I'm going to share with you um, a bunch of weekend plans. I have some gardening plans. I have some food preservation plans um, and some sewing plans that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the fabrics that I used for my August Fabric Mart Fabricista mix. Um, that video and the blog post over on FabricMartFabrics.com will drop on Monday. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the fabric. And then, what else? Oh, and a review. I'm going to review what I'm wearing. So yeah, it's a lot of stuff in this video. So if you're interested in any of this, stay tuned. All right, let's get into it. What am I gonna do first? First, let me show you the patterns that I actually had already picked up when I recorded the last video. Remember when I mentioned to you all that I really didn't need any more um, Butterick or Vogue or McCall's patterns, which were the ones that were running on sale? Uh, the reason why is I had already done the online order. I picked things up in the store and I shared some of those with you guys. But my store didn't have a lot of the patterns that I wanted. And as I mentioned, there was that sale on somethingdelightful.com. So I had actually already snagged these um, as well. That happens to me sometimes. My store doesn't always put the new patterns out. And I think because, you know, the area that I live in, often they'll only have like two of the pattern. They don't get tons of them. So if all the local sewists are liking the same patterns, they become unavailable pretty quickly. So anyway, let me show you what I got. I got this one Butterick pattern because I thought this top was really cute. Actually, all the versions are cute, but I'll show you. My main preference is View C. I think that is really cute. I think it'll be great for fall transition. It'll be great in the winter with a cardigan on top. And, you know, it rolls right into spring and summer. So uh, this is Butterick 68 nine five and this pattern calls for woven fabrics and then i got a bunch of mccall's patterns and again a lot of these were a part of the new summer collection and my store just didn't have them this first one is mccall's 8282 i got this for the dress mainly but i do like that top uh view b i think that's really cute but I got it mainly for the dresses, views C especially, and D. So yeah, I think that's really cute. And this McCall's 8282 is calling also for, you know, woven fabrics, cottons, ginghams, things like that. This next pattern, again, is one where they did the split size range. So I got both. I'm like an in-between sizer. I'm not sure which one is going to fit best. I might need to use the top of the smaller range and then the bottom of the uh, larger range and merge them together. I don't know. I won't know until I cut it out and measure the pattern pieces to see, you know, where I'm going to fall. So this will, I'm going to share this with you all um, as I talk through um, this new pattern splitting. So for the smaller range pattern, they're calling that one M8311. And then for their women's uh, sizing, they're calling it M8331. I don't know, because this is made with a two-way stretch, I think that the you know regular size pattern, um, the regular Mrs. pattern is going to be perfectly fine for me. But I do want to test out the sizing uh, in this women's or plus size range just to see um, if there's any uh, difference. 
So I'm probably going to cut the, the smallest size on here and I'll make another one in the larger sizes on here. And then we'll do a comparison and see like does one fit better than the other? Is one drafted? You know, my hope is that these, that the larger range is drafted already where the, it's adding in that curvature. So the pattern is drafted for those of us that have more of an hourglass shape. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll test it out. I grabbed two swimsuit patterns because again, I'm going to make some swimsuits. I, I got to give this a try. I think it'll be really a fun and uh, just different thing for me to challenge myself to make. You got to get the fit so right on that, right? So I thought this was really cute. All the, all the options on here are cute. This is McCall's 8330. And you can see here it comes with the uh, one piece that has a little one shoulder accent. You get the bottoms and you get two different tops. I really like these. And then this next swimsuit again is the same swimsuit uh, just in the regular sizing. So I got the 14 to 22 size packet but they've changed the number and they are calling this um mccall's 8329 so the woman's range is 8330 and the regular mrs range is 8329 so that'll be another fun one for me to test to see you know which range works best for my body this next one is just, it's just a basic skirt. This is the kind of skirt that I could make completely on my own without a pattern. Um, but I went on and snagged this. This is McCall's 8326. And I mean, you know, the classic tiered skirt just never goes out of style. Um, I actually have a lot of these in a maxi length. I want to actually make the shorter versions A and B, you know, I'm trying to change things up a little bit. I'm actually really enjoying uh, wearing shorter dresses uh, recently, and um, you know, I was so obsessed with maxis for so long, and so I'm going to try this in the midi length and the knee length. And again, this McCall's eight three two six. The skirt is calling for woven fabrics, cotton blends lawns, chalets, and ginghams. This is actually a learn to sew level two pattern and I just think this is darling. Let me just see here real quick. It has an invisible zipper so that's why it's level two. So this is not a pull over the head. It has an invisible zipper on the side I believe. Uh, but look at this top pattern. Really, really cute. This is McCall's 8287 and, um, you know, just some really sweet classic silhouette blouses. I love a blouse that has darting in it. For me, I really like all the sleeve variations on this and this just can become one of those, you know, wardrobe staple tops. So I'm really looking forward to giving that a try. I like the little collar variations too, the square neck, the little collar. And so yeah, this is McCall's 8287. This goes from size 6 to 24. Here's another pattern from their Learn to Sew range. This is level 3 because you do some shearing. And I, again, love all versions of this top. This goes also from extra small to extra, extra large which is numerically a size 4 up to a size 26, calling for your classic woven fabrics, uh, dotted Swiss cotton blends, chalets, as well as cotton lawns. So it could be really, really pretty. Uh, but yeah, I love all the views and we'll probably try to make all three views. McCall's 8325. And so yeah, tops are still something that I really need to add more um, handmade tops to my wardrobe. I made a lot of t-shirts. I've made a lot of long sleeve shirts. But what's funny as the warmer weather was going through, I'm like, I need some more short sleeve like blouses, not t-shirts, but like blousey shirts. 
So I'm going to give this pattern a whirl um, and see how it fits, how I like it. Okay, these were the two I were really bummed they didn't have in the store, and I was so glad that the online sale was rolling. These were the main two that I really wanted to get from that McCall's, uh, the new summer range. So this first one is McCall's 8322, and I love everything about this dress. I love all the lengths. Um, I love it as a top. It's definitely one that I'm going to try to get uh, made up actually in the next couple weeks so I can wear it. I would I would wear this dress, you know, with the right color fabric uh, into the fall with a cardigan or even a blazer on top. So I definitely want to try and get this made. And then again, keeping with all the tears that I'm clearly loving right now, um, I really love this uh, dress from their summer range, McCall's 8285. This one comes in the size range, extra small to extra, extra large as well. Um, I didn't look to see if they had a plus range in this because I know with this styling, you know, I fall comfortably within their standard patterns. Um, but anyway, I, I love this. I love, again, all the versions. I love the blouse. I love the different uh, dress sleeve variations as well as lengths. And so this pattern is also going to go on the stack of things I'm going to try to complete as uh, end of summer uh, transitioning into fall kind of items. You know, with the right fabric selections and the right colors, you know, this is going to work great. So yeah, love this. Patterns were off sale for a couple days and then they were back on sale. Um, or maybe they were always continuously on sale. I don't know. Um, I feel like I looked and they weren't on sale because I wanted to see what they were coming out with fall, for for fall and um, nothing was up at that point and I went back again because um, I saw on social media that they had released their images for the fall, at least for the Vogue collection. So I went back on to look through and I saw they had them on sale. So I did an order of their new fall 2022 collection. They were on sale for $6.99 I believe. And again, because I went on and set up the account, I always get an extra discount. Um, and so I'll show you, uh, let me pull up. I'll be showing you as I talk through what I got, how much I paid for the patterns. Okay, so this sale at somethingdelightful.com, and I'll put a link in the description box so you can just click on it and get over there. But this sale ends on August 28th, and today is August 27th. When I'm, no, today is, Today is August 26th while I'm recording it, so I am gonna try and get this video out today so you uh, you guys have some time to look at it. But it says here, Butterick patterns are $3.99, McCall's patterns are $4.99, and Vogue patterns are $6.99. Um, now, I know, you know, at the big box store, they'll sometimes be a little bit cheaper, um, but for me, this is still a great price, and honestly, with gas prices these days, and kind of all evens out. Plus, I love the fact that they usually have the patterns in stock that I want. Sometimes I'll drive all the way there to get the patterns and they don't even actually have what I want. I end up buying random things sometimes. So anyway, this is not a bad price for me. Um, and so what I will say is that at least when I shopped, only the Vogue fall patterns have been released. You can go online and check today. Maybe they've released the fall Butterick and McCall's. So uh, so I did get one of the vintage Vogue patterns. Um, I don't know if this is newly released for fall or not, but it's Vogue 1902. I think this is just a really beautiful blouse and I'm excited to give this a try. I got this coat. It is Vogue 1911. I think this is just a delightfully sophisticated Coat. I want to give this a whirl. I got this dress. It comes in a couple of sleeve and length variations. This is Vogue 1908. I really got this for the detailing. Um, I want to give this a try. I think this would be pretty cut off and just sewn up and worn as a top. I also got this dress pattern, Vogue 1898. Again, just Lovely feminine details. I want to give that a try. 
I got Vogue 1901, mainly for the top. I'm not sure. I'd have to check the sizing on the skinny pants. Um, really cute look. This is totally something I would have worn in the 90s, early 2000s. Love this. And then I got um, Vogue 1914, mainly for the top. But I do like the um, kind of flare leg, straight leg pants. I think this would be a cute loungewear set. Something a little bit different than like the basic, you know, t-shirt and straight leg pants that I've been sewing up. I got Vogue 1913. I got this. I love it. I had this exact same outfit in graduate school. I had a black velvet cat suit and I would layer that thing with different kinds of blazers boots pumps oh my gosh i love that little outfit <laughs> i love that whole look so i got that pattern um i also got vogue 1912 again just cute loungewear i got vogue 1904 interesting um i got this mainly because i think this would be like a really cool and interesting blouse so I don't intend to make the dress, but I love the detailing up at the top. The sleeve detailing could be kind of a fun patchwork artsy kind of blouse. So, you know, we'll see. We'll play around with that. And then the final one I got, um, I grabbed two final uh, ones from Butterick because I love them. I got Butterick 6107 because I still have a lot of coats that I want to make. And then I got this blouse pattern, Butterick 6898, because I do want to make some more blouses. So yeah, I uh, this is what I got. And the Vogue patterns, my final price was $5.59. And then for the Butterick patterns, my final price was $3.19. And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share with you all in case you want to start getting um, some new fall patterns in. If you like the Vogue range, it's a great time to get them. I don't know when they'll be in sale on stores, but you can keep an eye on your different flyers. Um, but I went on and snagged mine so I can get an early start on sewing up or at least planning and thinking through some of these fall items. All right, and I'll keep an eye out for when they release the fall McCall's Butterick Simplicity. Um, if you guys know about anything, let us know in the comments, all right? All right, so that's it with the new fall uh, Vogue range and some other extras that I ordered. Um, I just, I looked in the account and they haven't actually even shipped yet. Um, so probably at some point next week, I'll have them and I can start planning and playing around with those. All right, I'm going to go ahead now and share with you all um, some of my, I shouldn't even say sewing plans. I'm going to say sewing room plans because I don't know if I'll get any sewing done, but I do want to at least get the fabric matching finalized and start cutting into some of these patterns. So I shared with you from my two new patterns, um, the two uh, that I want to try to get sewn up soon, these two. So I'm going to pull those aside because I want to start getting the patterns cut out and start thinking about the fabrics that I want to use for those. And then the other things that I at least I'm going to try to cut out, I mentioned in my last video that I want to make a couple more of the Bren McCall's dress. I forgot to tell you guys the pattern number because I just always refer to it as Bren McCall's. Um, but that black dress that I was wearing in the video is McCall's 8032. I did see that they still have that online. It's on sale. When I clicked on it, they were sold out of the smaller range, but they did have the large, extra large. And I make myself the large, just for your reference. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm going to cut, I pulled three fabrics. I'm going to choose probably two, get that cut out. 
The next one, um, I shared this with you guys in um, a pattern haul um, that I got like early summer. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out because I wanna make this tank dress and the jacket. Let me uh, get you guys the pattern number. And actually you can see it better here. This is Simplicity 9541. And this is what it looks like. So yes, I'm interested in making view C the dress and then view D the uh, little jacket. So I wanna get that, the paper pattern cut out, finalize my fabric. And then I wanna make these two and wear them together. Hang on, let me take this out of the plastic. Okay, so I shared these uh, patterns that I'm about to show you, these two Stylock patterns. Um, I shared with you guys in a recent uh, uh, haul video, early spring, I think, or maybe it was late winter. I'll try to link it in the iCards as well as in the description box because I got a lot of really awesome style art patterns that I'm finally starting to cut into. Um, so I want to make this cardigan and I'm going to make that knit top to layer over top of this uh, Cruise Kim uh, tank dress. I think that would be a cute uh, little pairing there. Of course, I can wear them separately with different things, but I like the idea of layering that wrap knit top over top of this kind of uh, slightly flared knit dress. So yeah, I'm gonna get those cut out and I'm thinking about making uh, one knit dress in a solid and then making, cutting out one of the knit tops in the same uh, solid colored knit and then maybe a coordinating print. That's kind of where I'm going right now with that, what I'm thinking. And then the final pattern that I wanna try to cut out and make my final fabric selections for, I pulled three fabrics for this, but I just wanna start with one, check the fit, make sure I love it as much as I think I do. And that is the simplicity pattern that I mentioned in my last video that I was so excited to get on sale. And that is Simplicity 9597, this uh, new Mimi G summer dress pattern. So yeah, I want to get that cut out. I'm really excited to sew that one up. It's, I'm gonna, the first one that I cut out is definitely going to be a print. I have two prints that I'm deciding between. And um, yeah, I'm excited to sew that up. I really hope I love it as much as I think I'm gonna love it. So yeah, those are my sewing room plans uh, for this weekend. Now let me quickly share some of the uh, gardening and uh, preservation things that I'm going to be getting done this weekend. And all this weekend stuff I'm gonna share with you guys throughout videos hopefully next week so I can show um, what I actually got done. Um, I've been making my jams. It's that time of year. All the fruits of summer are here. I'm able to get them at great prices in bulk. And so I'm trying to get my pantry stocked up, restocked up on fresh um, homemade jams and preserves and all kinds of fruit-based things uh, while I can get them at like peak. Uh, the one fruit that's at peak right now that I can get here are figs um i've been able to get four different varieties of figs here at my local uh, trader joe's actually and um so i'm making up all kinds of fig jams i did the individual varieties as their own fig jams and yesterday actually i made one with strawberries i got a, I got a bunch of um organic delicious sweet strawberries at a phenomenal price and so um, I made some plain strawberry jam, which I'll share with you guys next, but look at this strawberry fig jam. And these are um, low sugar recipes that I make. They're really more like, this is more like a spreadable fruit preserve and not like a sugary jam. It's so good. Um, yes, so I got that done. Here's my homemade strawberry jam. I got, I got seven cups, uh, this or these half pint jars of the plain strawberry done. 
And then for that uh, strawberry fig that I showed you, I got 10 half pint jars of that one made up. So yeah, today actually I'm gonna do some more fruit prep uh, after I get this video out. Um, and then I'm gonna go through my garden and harvest. I'm gonna try to get some pickles done this weekend. Um, and then I have a bunch of um, vegetables that I'm gonna be pulling and freeze drying and just chopping and freezing. So really quickly, uh, first I'm gonna share with you guys this picture here, some images of what I harvested from the garden just a couple days ago. My garden, my garden right now is like at peak productivity at, of so many different things. I'm still waiting for my big tomatoes to ripen, but I got a lot of cherry tomatoes ripening. I have so many cucumbers. Um, peppers are coming in, but really the star of the garden right now are the beans and the squash, the different summer and winter squash. So my plan for gardening this year was to really grow a lot of food that I could harvest and store in my food pantry with minimal processing. And so that led to uh, things that I could just quickly chop and freeze, things that I could quickly chop and freeze dry, as well as things that um, I could just put them on the shelf as is um, and just go down to my food pantry, my food storage room in the basement where it's cool. Um, it's not a proper root cellar, but it's quite cool down there. Um, but food, my uh, squash and onions and things like that last in that room for months. So let me just show you really quickly uh, some of the things that are ready to be harvested in the garden. All right, friends, so let me show you guys some of the things that needs to be harvested actually today in the garden. My cucumber plants have been just completely amazing this year. This is a lime cucumber, and I think I've harvested probably 50 of them already. Um, this branch here, these are dragon's egg cucumbers. That's a baby dragon's egg cucumber. See here, so many blooms. And again, I have harvested so many cucumbers already from these plants. And the cucumbers, they just, they hide. See, so I have to go in and pull back some leaves. And I was thinking, you know, oh, I'll pull them and put fresh cucumber seeds in because I thought they would start dwindling down but they have not at all look at that they have not at all <laughs> and so I actually put the new starts for the cucumbers and some other things up in my hillside garden which I will share with you guys soon on this channel um, I'm growing a lot of fall crops up there and uh, yeah, that garden doesn't get as much sun as this garden down here does. So, but it's just, I'll go on the inside real quick, but it's so many, so many cucumbers. One of my favorite flowers, the zinnia. I have lots of zinnias growing in the garden. I have lots of nasturtium growing in the garden. And the temperatures have cooled down a little bit from the 90s into the 80s. And uh, the nasturtium just started flowering like crazy again. Also growing a lot of beans in my garden. I love seeing the busy little bees that come down and pollinate all the flowers for me. This is a scarlet runner bean which has some of the most beautiful red flowers. I have lots of squash growing down in here, all kinds of varieties. And these vines just, the vines are so big and they just overlap and they're kind of weighing the fence down because the squash is so heavy, um, but it's not quite time to harvest them yet. So I just leave them alone. I'm growing a lot of beans. This is a German Blauhilde bean, love those. And you see here, like there's, there's just food squash hidden everywhere. So I have a lot to harvest today. As you see out here, I have a lot of really 
huge squash in there. It's so big. And you can see all the vines. They just wrap all around my fencing. And it's just food just hides. I and mean, look at that. <laughs> look at that. So I got to get out here and harvest a lot of this today. And I'll be spending the weekend chopping and freezing. The winter squash just gets harvested and left to cure. Like these uh, acorn style squash. It's a little. That down here, I don't know if you can see, it's a little Japanese pumpkin. I'm even growing some tropical crops here, which in my zone are not typically able to grow, but I'm getting them to grow. This is a um, jelly melon. It looks like a dinosaur egg. <laughs> so I'm on the inside of the garden now, and you see I have a lot of herbs also that I need to harvest this weekend. This is a beautiful uh, Thai basil variety that I'll harvest. And again, just cucumbers and cucumber blossoms galore. Let me see, there's a really cool trumpet-shaped squash that I'm growing. I already harvested one, it was delicious. And I noticed there are a couple more are growing. So I'm excited to see those. Let's see here, these really long Japanese cucumbers. This is my husband's favorite. These are some purple Japanese peppers that are just so, so abundant. I've already harvested a lot of those. Some more pickling cucumbers. So yeah, I'll be making a lot of pickles this weekend. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Just quick little peek into my garden. I love my garden so much. I actually have three different um, places on my property where I'm growing food. I have a kitchen garden literally right off the kitchen. I'll share that with you guys maybe in the next video. Then I have that big raised bed garden, which is, um, I have down there, I think 11 raised beds um, and they're bigger raised beds. And then I have probably almost a hundred grow bags down there just framing out the entire perimeter and all that squash and melon, pumpkins, cucumbers, lots of tomatoes actually especially the cherry tomatoes those are actually growing in grow bags not in raised bed gardens and then my raised bed gardens i have um, mostly tomatoes um, and now i'm going to be transitioning two of the bigger beds to fall crops um, but i'm growing flowers and all kinds of things so i'll just share now i won't go into full detail but i'll share a little bit so if any of you are interested in seeing that, you can get a little glimpse. I know there are a lot of us that um, garden as well as sow. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited to share a little bit of that part of my life here on this channel. So I thank you for allowing me to do that. All right, we're getting into wrap up mode. I'm gonna get into the uh, review of this uh, ensemble that I'm wearing. First, let me show you really quickly the two fabrics that I used for my August Fabric Mart Fabricista mix. Um, I can't show you the project yet. It will launch uh, on the Fabric Mart Fabricista blog on Monday. And I'm gonna try to have my video up on Monday also where I then show you that and I'll link to the blog post so you can see more details of my impression uh, over on their blog. But I just want to show you the fabric that I used for the project. It was actually a new to me pattern that I used. So for the wearable muslin, I um, used this gorgeous, gorgeous linen fabric. It's actually, let me try to put it close and see if you can see it. But it's actually a fabric that's woven with kind of a terracotta orange uh, fiber along with kind of a golden lean, kind of a goldenrod color. So that weave gives, um, it's not like a flat, solid color uh, linen. Let me show you the salvage and you can, you see the salvage and you can see what I mean, how it has that goldenrod uh, fiber woven in there. And it's, it's a really hard fabric to capture 
on camera. It's so beautiful and I love it so much. Um, and I actually picked this, um, they made this type of fabric in like several colorways and I've shared them with you guys already in hauls. But I have, um, I love, love, love They're this quality of linen. Um, some of the best linen that I've ever sewn with in my life. It's really, really great. And then this second one, after I checked the fit, and luckily the fit was great, I had to make a couple of adjustments. Um, and then, so the second one I made, this was really the one that I wanted, wanted, that I got this fabric specifically for. And uh, look at this, guys. So, so it's that same kind of fabric where it has that um, variegation in there. You see the salvage? It's kind of a kind of a lilac-y purple with a blue woven, and then it's printed on top. So this is what the inside of the fabric looks like the wrong side of the fabric and then this is the right side of the fabric and this is a 100% um, pure linen I think these linens are imported from Italy and I'm telling you guys they are they are absolutely incredible linens if you like linen I would definitely um, have you guys check that out and speaking of which let me double check and they were on sale yesterday. Let me check and see if they're still on sale. Yep, they're still on sale. They're on sale today at least. It doesn't have an end date, but all linen and linen blends are on sale for um, $11.99. And some of them are regular priced like 40 bucks. So check those out if you are interested in linen. They have some really gorgeous colorways. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna put a link in the description box. I didn't know this all this time, but Fabric Mart Fabric, I actually have a referral code uh, that you guys can use uh, if you shop there. So I've been linking, <laughs> I've been linking to them for like two years now since I've been a Fabricista and I never use my referral link. So I will put my referral link in the description box uh, to this video. Um, I'll try to go back and put it in my other videos, but basically what it does, I think it gives you $10 and it gives me $10. So yeah, I think if people start using that, I think I might start doing Fabric Mart Fabric uh, giveaways. Um, yeah, that could be a fun little um, supply of, you know, money generated from the channel that I can then basically give back and share with you guys to get some fabric and patterns from over there. So yeah, I, I will use the link and you know, if you're into that sort of thing, please use it. Um, it doesn't cost you anything at all. It's just Fabric Mart's uh, way of thanking me for referring people to their business. All right, so uh, yeah, now final thing, let's get into this pattern review. So, I am wearing one of my fall makes. I shared this with you all in my fall 2021 plans, fall winter. Um, and I'm still trying to sprinkle these, all the things that I made into videos. Um, and so, today I'm sharing with you all. This is Vogue 1852. So this was from my loungewear category that I shared with you all. Um, I showed you this pattern, I showed you this fabric. I had enough fabric to make the robe, the dress, and the belt. And then I had a little odd piece of fabric left over and I made a circle scarf. So let's get into the pictures as I talk through my impressions of this pattern. First of all, quick and easy sew. Loved it, extremely comfortable, and I will be making this multiple times. <laughs> I'm going to, actually I already pulled a couple of fabrics. I pulled some fabric that I have where I also have enough to make uh, the leggings and the top because I mean, that's my sleep, that's my typical sleeping outfit. 
you see there I want to make the the top and the leggings and then I'll definitely and then I'll definitely be making the little nightgown and the robe again um, they were very quick soles they came together very nicely I will say I think the model here that they use she must be taller than five foot seven or they made this shorter or put in a huge hem I don't know because you see where it's hitting on me and I'm five foot seven on this model is showing um, that the dress and the robe are above her knee length um, the other thing I found is that the robe sleeves are very very long um, and at first I was going to shorten them but honestly I usually have my sleeves pushed up or if I'm feeling a little cold I actually like to have my sleeves kind of huddled around my wrist so I think for now I'm going to leave these sleeves long like this but I do think for my next versions I'll probably go ahead and either make like a fold up sleeve so I can fold it up and fold it down or go ahead and cut that off right at the wrist um, but I have like no complaints about this pattern very easy to do sewed up nicely I love the uh, facing the way they face the robe um, I love that it's a full wrap robe you have the little belt loops that you can put on to hold your belt uh, in place um, very very comfortable very comfortable and especially for summer um, you know I'm liking these little like sleeveless little sleep dresses night and you know little nightgowns sleep dresses whatever you want to call them honestly this is one of those patterns that could totally be close <laughs> if you pick the right fabric I mean it becomes a tank dress with a wrap cardigan like if you made this with a sweater fabric and just to like a knit I don't know I put this on when I after I made it I'm like you know I wouldn't wear necessarily this print outside but like if this was all black I would totally wear this outside <laughs> so anyway I love this pattern it is on the website somethingdelightful.com as a part of the sale if you're interested in picking that up just wanted to share that with you guys quickly today and that is going to be it for me that is enough right so I thank you guys for letting me share um, my hauls um, my gardening and food preservation projects my sewing plans and do look out for my fabric mark fabricista blog post you know I'll share pictures on Instagram and I will do everything I can to have the video review up also on Monday so you can see it one of my favorite things that I've made this year absolutely one of my favorite things I made this year and you guys know me I will definitely be making this pattern that I use for the fabric mark fabricista project I will be making it at least two more times <laughs> and then Monday's video I will show you the two fabrics that I pulled for the next two that I will be cutting out very soon <laughs> all right thanks guys have a wonderful weekend i'll see you guys back here on the channel next week okay bye